Amen. Have your seat in God's presence. All right. So as I preach, you must write. Is it that you write or you put it on your phone? But if you are on the WhatsApp and checking status, the one of the favorite name of God that I love is Jehovah Rohi, the Lord that sees. So he's looking at you. Amen. Amen. But this should change your life. This should transform you as the word of the Lord has the capacity to always and at all times. The seventh spirit of God. In the book of Revelation, John spoke of the seventh spirit of God. And that you will find in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 4, Revelation chapter 3, verse 1, Revelation chapter 4 and verse 5. Scripture speaks of the seventh spirit of God. I want you to understand that this is symbolic. It means it's a symbol. It doesn't mean that there are three spirits or seven spirits. It's symbolic. Seven in the number is the number of perfection. Seven is the number of wholeness. And seven is the number of completeness. So when we talk about the seven spirit of God, we are talking about the complete spirit of God. Uh, and tonight I want to talk about the seven manifestation of this perfect spirit in the life of the believer. I'll give you practical insight. I would also share with you how you can engage this seven spirit to see a manifestation in your life. Because I think at this season and in this time, we do not just want to learn and know theoretically. You do not just want to know what the verse is. You want to know how the verse applies to your life. Because that is where change really comes. That's where transformation comes. And that's where newness, as the word of the Lord has come to us, uh, that's how newness comes. Today we are speaking about the Holy Spirit. And there's a dimension of the Holy Spirit I want you to understand tonight. And that is that the Holy Spirit is the anointing you need for now. Look at, your, look at the person next to you and say, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the anointing, the anointing. you need, you need. Now. now. Many people have the idea that when I, I will begin to manifest God, and I'll begin to walk in greater revelations of God when they pour the olive oil on me. Some people believe that it is the viscosity of the anointing. For physics students, it means how thick the oil is. That determines how thick your work with God also is. But it doesn't work like that. You find in scriptures, and you read through scriptures, especially in the New Testament, you will not find a place where a people were anointed with oil except in the case of sickness. But Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit and he was a powerful person. Bible says to us in the book of Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with what? Palm oil? Coconut oil? He said with the Holy Ghost and with power. So the essential of our days uh, is that you must walk in the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, listen to this. You are not a believer if you cannot uh, walk in the reality of the Holy Spirit. The more of the Spirit you can manifest, the greater your level of work with God. The essence of the anointing in the New Testament uh, is not in the bottle of oil, but is in the person. And that person is the Holy Spirit. Can I ask you how Jesus was anointed? Bible says to us in Luke chapter 4 and then verse 14. Bible says Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. That means the empowerment he had. That word empowerment is the word edunamo, which is the ability to perform. And the empowerment he had was because the Holy Spirit came upon him. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just trying to break it down and teach you tonight. But I'll take my time and whenever I stop, I stop. But at least you will get it. Do you understand? I tell your neighbor you will get it. Yes. All right. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I think you should all know that. Philippians 4, 13, what does it say? I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. That word Christ there means the anointed one. So if you would translate and you read that verse in that way, you can say, I can do all things uh, through the anointing of the anointed one that strengthens me. Do you understand that? It is the power of the Holy Spirit that made Jesus who he is. Because that's what anointed him. And that's why the Bible says in, in Romans chapter 8 and verse 11 that except a man have the spirit of Christ, is none of his. Therefore, it is the spirit of Christ in us that make us who we are. The more we abide in Christ, therefore, the more of the power of the Holy Spirit we have uh, going and working in us. So, now, when we talk about this power of the Holy Spirit, some people believe it's something they will get into. You know, when you see some people pray, the way they pray, they pray like now they want to receive the they want to receive the Holy Spirit. But that's not true. John writing 4 John chapter 2 and verse 20. The Bible says you have an anointing. You have received an anointing from the Holy One. It's not that you will receive. I mean, that's Genesis 101. 
that into something that is in the past. So it means that you have received the anointing. Can someone say with a loud voice, I am anointed? You know, sometimes when I'm praying, I just do this. I just raise my hand up and I say, thank you, God, because you've joined, my hand, you've joined your hands with mine. And I say, yes, I receive the anointing now. You, you are waiting for someone to lay hands on you. I just, come, I just do it myself. Why? Because I have the anointing from the Holy One. I, I don't need anybody. I have the anointing from the Holy One. I have the anointing from the Holy One. It draws in me. Verse 27 says, and the anointing which you have received teaches you all things. It's not the anointing you will receive. It's the anointing you have received. And it teaches you all things. I have that anointing and it teaches me all things. You see, that's the first pillar of the Holy Spirit you must understand. And that is the knowledge that I have him already. He's here. He's in me. No one can come to God except he draws them. But there is a level that is called the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And that's a greater level than just having him residing on you. You read the book of Luke chapter 24. Jesus was going. And the Bible says Jesus called the disciples together and breathed upon them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And then Jesus said to them, verses later, and said, tarry in Jerusalem, verse 49, till you receive, said, tarry in Jerusalem till you are endued with power from on high. So, though he has said receive the Holy Spirit, he still told them to wait. Why? Because what they received was the beginning of an experience. He wanted them to receive a full immersion of the Holy Ghost. And that is the Greek word baptism, which is what you find the word baptism from. Water baptism, um, Holy Spirit baptism, fire baptism. And what does that word baptism, what does it mean? It means to fully immerse under a substance. To fully immerse under a substance. If you have ever been baptized in water baptism before, you have done water baptism, don't raise your hand. Raise your hand. Glory to God. A lot of baptized folks are in this house. Okay, you might recall that while they were baptizing you, they put you under that water, and sometimes you lift your leg because of fear of water, and then the pastor says he will do it again. Did you, did you, did that happen to you, or you saw it happen to someone? All right. Why is that? Because for it to be a baptism, it must be a full immersion. When they put your head down, you put your leg up, so it was not a full immersion. So they have to do it again. It's to fully immerse you in that substance that is the water. Are you listening to me? Yes, Therefore, when the Holy Ghost come upon you, like Jesus said to them, Bible says, when the day of Pentecost had truly come, they were fully under that substance of a person. It means to be fully under the influence of the Holy Ghost. That's what full, our baptism in the Holy Spirit means. It means that your senses is not even operating now. It means that your mind has gone away. It means that you are dancing and you didn't know you were dancing. It means you are speaking language you are not in control of. It means you are rolling on the floor and then your friend saw you later and said, why are you rolling on the floor? Somebody said you are even making sound like an animal. He said, I didn't know. Someone said you dance so well. I never saw you dance that way. Someone said you are laughing. I've never seen so much joy with you. And they were wondering what's going on here. Praise God. And what's going on is because you are fully under the influence of a person. And that person is the Holy Spirit. That person is the Holy Spirit. It's not a substance, it's a person. It's a person. A person that speaks, a person that has feelings, a person that communicates truth and divine truths, even with the ordained of God. Who are the ordained of God? They are the elect of God, the beloved of God. And you are the beloved of God. Because God Himself sits on your inside, He dwells on the inside. So I, say, I don't know whether I matter much. I love, I matter so much. If I don't matter much, God will not live here. Someone say, I don't know whether you are valuable. You don't have to. Even if your father call you bastard, it doesn't matter. They can call you a mistake. It's just the idea. The idea that matters to me is the supernatural idea that I am so worthwhile and I'm what I want so much that God decides to pack from heaven and send a being into me is representation. The Holy Spirit. One time I go to my father's house and I say, God is here. And they were looking at me. That was nothing but, but just a revelation of who you are. Everywhere I go, God comes. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure you had the tangibility of God before I came into this meeting, but you had it when I walked in. Why? Because it is impossible for a temple to be in a place and the spirits behind the temple not being there. Ye are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Oh, you don't like the KJV? You are. The temple of the Holy Spirit. 
That revelation will transform your life. It stops you from failing. It stops you from praying some prayers that are stupid. It stops you from being religious. It stops you from having low self-esteem. Why? The tangibility of who you are. But that is an expression that we are all conversant with. It's an expression of power that we all like and love. I mean, you have seen miracle service. Abuja miracle service. Tanker miracle service. Okelele miracle service. Kaduna miracle service. Why? There's going to be an expression of power. But how much power do you need when your life is working well? Can I ask you that again? You don't need a miracle when you are living in the blessing. Yes, sir. When your GB is 4.8, when the prophet called the president comes here and says, Today I declared your life, your GB life. A 4.8, don't, they don't say amen too much. Where is he going? But a 1.8, the amen will start from here and we get to Lautek. Why? Because she needs a miracle. Therefore, if you are don't, if I'm not sick, I don't need the power of the Holy Spirit to heal me. If I am spiritually alive and active, you lay hands on me, I may not fall down. Why? Because I am enjoying God. It is the other way. But there are revelations and there are depths of a complete life that you can access, but you will still need the Holy Spirit. And today I want to speak of that dimension of God. The seventh dimension of the spirit that we are not so conversant with. Because we are not a generation that are taught, we are a generation that are shown. People show us so much power of God. And so you like it. I just shake it. Just shake it. Glory to God. Awesome manifestations of God. I never talk them down because I also move in that. But it's important that for your daily living, you understand that the Holy Spirit is essential. When you have a creative block, you are designing that you have a creative block. That is not the time for somebody to come and say, what to learn to say, I can sleep or fall down. You need something deeper. When you are about to make an investment commitment, that is not the time for somebody to now start saying, hey, anybody needs a miracle really here. No! You want to be able to see tomorrow. You want to have all the information. Are you listening to me? And so, I want to quickly share with you one of the most important secrets of my life. I tell people this is not a sermon. This is a life principle. So, if you will, will you walk with me? And let's take this journey together. Are you bored? All right. So, tell somebody that was just, that was just foundation. That, that's just introduction. Ah, we are just aware. That's just introduction. You mean it's like burger? We are now going to the feelings. That's what makes the shawarma interesting. Not the bread that is without sugar. It is the feelings. How many foodies do we have here? God bless you, my sister. You will get up. You will grow up. Food for the belly. God will destroy both. But we eat it here or not before he destroys it. Goats before we will first of all eat it. I love good food. Well cooked, well spiced. How many years will you spend on the earth that you will not eat snail? Let's go to the snail of the word of God. <laughs> Praise God. The first dimension of the seventh spirit of God the first in the manifestation that you will find in Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2 that we started with is that he is the spirit of the Lord. And that's important. If you will walk and say in part in your life, you must take cognizance that the spirit you carry is not the spirit of this world, is not the spirit of your village, is not the spirit of witches and wizards, is the spirit of God himself. You see, that must that must revolutionize your life and your thinking. It is the spirit of the Lord. Someone says, I just kissed a lady. Let me practice whether the Holy Ghost will mark. You are a stupid person. That is a manifestation. The spirit of the Lord is on the inside. You see, tongues is just, it's just a manifestation. 
who you be, who you are, is that the Spirit of the Lord is in you. And that's the greatest, that's the most awesome miracle, that the God, the creator and the curator of the world will choose to live inside of you is what I cannot understand. How petty you are, 5.1, how short you look, but the creator of the world still lives inside of you. Awesome. Look at yourself in the mirror. Every time I say, ah, <laughs> this is absolutely impossible. It is the grace of God. It is the awesomeness of this creator. It is how good he is that he will reduce himself to being on your inside. He didn't just take a part. You know, Moses had a conversation with God. And Moses said, if you will not go with us, we will not go. He said, no, I will let the angels of my face go before you. And Moses said, no, we will not leave this. They said, you go with us. And then Moses warned and said, I, I will go with you. But you see, that is small. Look at that. I said, that is small. God is not going with you. God is in you. To so walk with me means you are outside and you are walking by my side. But this one, it means there is no, it, there's no separation between you and God. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17. The Bible says, He who is joined with the Lord is one spirit with him. He who is joined with the Lord. It has become so a core, what do you call that path that is solidified? That are joined together, separating it is a trouble. Have you tried to separate sand and gary before? Yeah. It's almost impossible because I am and therefore, when you speak sometimes and say, God said, I don't understand it. Say, I was thinking. It wasn't you. You, are, you, is not, you is not existing again. The you that is now existing is the you and God. Or the God in you. Scripture says, Christ in you. The hope of glory. Not outside of you. Somebody said, I'm looking for Christ. You can't look outside. You look on the inside. The Holy Spirit, like I always tell people, is not optional for the believer. Is a compulsion for the believer. Jesus looked at them. They were very angry. John, the sons of thunder. He said, you do not know the spirit you carry. Luke 9.55. Do you know the spirit you carry? You know, many times, let, let me now give you what I call an example here. Many times, spirit of the Lord, you see people who give their life to Christ and then they keep giving their life to Christ. You understand that? They did it this day and then they come back next week and then they still give it to Christ. And then they come back one week later and still give it to Christ. And you are wondering, when did the transaction take place? When they go back and collect it and they are giving it? I believe after like 20 lives. You know why they will keep doing that? Despite the fact that it does not make spiritual sense to you because you are a mature believer. Is that until the Spirit of the Lord on their inside can convince them. Until Romans 8, 16 becomes a reality to them. Nothing's happened. Until the spirit bears witness with their spirits that they are sons of God, nothing changes. It is the bearing witness uh, that makes them know. And what is the spirit that bears that witness? The spirit of the Lord. It is that witnessing spirit. I, I use the message, the witnessing spirit. It is that witnessing spirit uh, that also tells you and tells you this is a fact. You are going to make it in life. Mm -hmm. Have you ever doubted whether your future is bright? I know, even uh, the life will happen. <laughs> when life happens, you doubt. I'm a true, true believer. I tell truth. At certain times, I have myself, ah. Oh. And those days when I just see, I say, how? Oh. The witnesses me tells me it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Why? Because it's bearing witness to a fact, a truth. That's what witness does. That this thing is valid. There's veracity in this claim. It's going to happen for you. Someone says you will not pass a course. That witness me says you will pass. You will pass. You will make it. It's the Spirit of the Lord. How do I engage it? You have to say consciously, Holy Spirit, help me. Now, I'm, I'm telling you how to engage the Seven Spirit of God. The first one, how do you engage it? Consciously say, Holy Spirit, help me. Holy Spirit, I rest upon you for my academic sources. Holy Spirit, make alive my health. Make alive, quicken my health. You are the Spirit of the Lord. Quicken my health. Change this organ. How do you engage by speaking? Engage by depending upon him and putting it into words. That's how to engage the first one. What's the first one? 
the spirit of the Lord. Let's go to number two very quickly. The spirit of wisdom. The anointing comes in the form of wisdom. The Holy Spirit comes like it did upon Christ by granting Christ the divine ability of knowing. And now, Christ is in you. The Bible says in 4 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 24, Christ has made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and justification. So in you is wisdom. Let me say this to you. You can never and should never be dull because the spirit of wisdom dwells on your inside. They took notice of what some fishermen were talking to some Pharisees and guys who know the law. And when they were chatting, the way they were talking, they took notice of what being with Jesus had done for them. Because they knew these fishermen cannot have this kind of wisdom. It's impossible. Something on their inside was speaking even when they were quiet. That's the spirit of wisdom. Wisdom has to do with the future. Wisdom has to do with that which is unborn. That which is unknown. The anointing of the Holy Spirit helps the believer to know, to have information. Paul operates in the gift of wisdom. He knew. There are certain seasons of my life and times that I've seen that manifested. One time I was working and God said, pray for that lady. There's a job waiting for her. And then I called her. I said, let's, can we join hands together and pray? A week later, she got a job, federal government job. And then she called. I said, see, my fiancé does not have a job. Will you pray? I said, no, it does not work that way. <laughs> God said, I should. Because he saw, I seen it happen. It is a plan in the future for you. And I just had to pray so that I can align you with that which God wants. I remember the day I was going to meet my wife. I knew. God just told me, today you will meet your wife. Some people say, how much did you pray? Before I saw her, I knew. How? The spirit of wisdom. You need that kind of revelation. You need kind of you see, many people keep applying for jobs and they come back de disoriented. They come out with no self-confidence. Why? Because they go for every interview. You should know whether it's work or not. I was talking to somebody. 70% of Nigerians are young persons between the ages of 12 or let's say 8 to 45. And out of that 70%, only about 5% are working with their life now. The remaining 65% have their life on stop. Because they won't travel to Canada, USA, or Dubai. They are not getting married because they want to japa. Are you listening to me? They are not doing their master's because they want to japa. They are not going, they are not, they are not investing because they want to japa. They are not buying land from your president because they want to japa. Do you understand that? Why? And eventually, only a less than 5% have that dreams fulfilled. Before Nigeria steal your life away. You better hear from God. So that you will not stay for 40 years trying to become a Gaddafi. Walking through Libya to get to Europe. That's why it means to be a Gaddafi. You walk from Nigeria to Spain. Geography. I can tell you the geography of it. How you will walk. The countries you will move through. You know, I read geography so I can help you. <laughs> and I can tell you where you pass through water, the canoe and the boats. How many of you will be on a boat? If you like that kind of life, you can try it. But you need wisdom. Tell your neighbor you need wisdom. Yes. Not the one you read in books. Continue. Yes. You need God. Yes. Now, how do you do this? How do you engage this? There was a song I used to sing those days. I don't care how I sound. And I, don't, I don't want any key on it. I'll just sing it the way it is. Praise God. If it's not in any key, fine. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Mighty, mighty revealer. Mighty, mighty revealer. Come reveal your grace, Lord. Mighty, mighty revealer, come reveal your plan, Lord. Mighty, mighty revealer. No, I didn't hear it anywhere. It came to my spirit, and I've been singing that song for more than 15 years. Mighty, mighty revealer, mighty, mighty revealer, come reveal your word now. Mighty, mighty revealer. And when I sing that song, it reveals things to me because it's the one who reveals. When I want to make decisions, I just begin to sing, Mighty, mighty revealer, might. That's why I really get it wrong. I was telling a guy who was arguing with me some years ago, four years ago, I said, your life, he has come back. I can't, don't, we know what we know. Not because we have read books, but because we have him who ordains and orders tomorrow. And you can access him. You have seven relationships. You are still trying to see which one will work. 
Sebu spiri sebu religi. Tell you, reveal. He is the revealer. The Bible says to us in First Corinthians, chapter two, begin to read from verse nine. The Bible says that we do not know. Wait. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has anything to the mind of man. The things which God has prepared for them that love Him. And then He goes on to say, But the Spirit searches all things. Searches all things. And the Spirit tells us, tells us the secret things of God. So there is nothing that God is hiding from you. The Bible says the secret things belong to God, but those that are revealed belong to you and to your children forever. Number three now, the spirit of understanding. It is the spirit that helps us understand spiritual truth. Without him, you may read the Bible for years and you will gain nothing. It doesn't only help us to understand spiritual truth, he helps us understand all truths. How do I know that? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. The Bible calls him, Paul says, the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Spirit of knowledge and revelation, wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. So he's the one who reveals. He's the one who helps you to know. He's the one who gives you understanding. I cannot read anything and I will not understand it. I used to. But when I grasp this idea, never. 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 You see, it is what you say that you become. I sat in a class called geomorphology. If you ever read geography and you have never passed geomorphology, you have not done environmental science. You have not done it. <laughs> And I was telling people, I understand it. I know it. There is nothing simple. And I will go and read it, and I know it's difficult. <laughs> or 5B of me to say what the word says. How we know that we are from another kingdom is that our language is not the language of the world. We do not talk about what we see. We talk about what should be. I, I'm not denying there are giants in the land. I'm not denying that the, that the course is difficult. But it's not difficult. Just like Charles Kaft will say, I'm not denying that sickness can reign in the world. I'm denying his power to reign in my life. No, sickness cannot. No, I understand it. And I sat down there, I understand it. I understand it. I got to exam all. I wrote two pages. And then it was like they brought the picture of the textbook. And for the first time in my life, I cancelled first page. I cancelled second page. And I did my eyes like this, and I was writing. Because as I was seeing, I was just seeing it. The whole thing. The whole textbook I was seeing like this. I was writing. I just started. Needless to say, I passed it. Because I never failed the course in school. I don't know how you have the spirit of wisdom, a revelation, and you fail. And you say you are a president of the department. I don't understand how you would do that. You know, Christianity is not wearing yellow shirt on a blue or purple trouser. And use tie that is green. <laughs> Christianity is letting the world see the power of Christ in you. The Bible says, Daniel, they were not tested on biblical principles. But because the spirit of wisdom was in them, they were fine ten times better. Daniel 1, 17. Children in whom there is no blemish, furnished after the similitude of the palace. That's the kind of person you will need to become if you will be a change agent in the world. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7, Bible says, get wisdom, get understanding. The difference between us and the world should be like day and night. I remember when I was reading scriptures, I love reading Judges, Ruth, Genesis, Exodus. They have witness in the house. Very simple to read. Story that you can understand and flow with. Then I read Ephesians, Colossians, all those chants. And I said, God has called me and I didn't understand it, not to make a teach of it. I couldn't get it. I didn't understand what he was saying. Sometimes I say, Paul is a problem to Christianity. <laughs> Paul is a problem to Christianity. What? Just make it clear. Make it clear. What is this? The spirit of wisdom. What is going on here? But I knew I need to get it. So I sat down on it. And I began to pray, yes, Lord. I have understanding. The same spirit that wrote this Bible is in me. So it, it opens it up to me now. I understand it now. I understand it now. Kalobe shakra taba ru adaba. I start reading. It's not that you pray in tongues for one hour and you read it for ten minutes. You won't get it like that. So I start reading. 
after a while, the day I caught it, I knew. I knew my Archimedes pine. I just shouted, Eureka, I found it. Because I saw the lock. The light came. I knew that I found it. And since then, I have not stopped. It's been getting better. It can get better for you also. It can get better for you also. How do you engage it? Someone said, I don't understand my life. You can never understand it. You see, it is how you speak. Your problem is your world. You imagine, you say, I don't understand my And you speak inside of you. Every time you say that, that being just got disappointed. It's a waste of time, my boy. I, I picked the battery off. Abi? Now listen. And listen very well. What you say is what you become. A man's stomach, scripture says, belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his lips. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. What you say is what you become. I don't understand my husband. I don't understand my relationship. I don't understand my life. Exactly. Look at your life. So how do you engage it? My eyes of understanding is enlightened now. My eyes of understanding is enlightened now. Glory to God. My, I, I'm not saying your eyes of understanding is open, no. It's two different things, so oh. You see, that's how we make some assault in prayers. When you are praying for opportunities, you have an open eyes. When you are praying for understanding, you need light in your eyes. Are you listening to me? Let me explain it in a way you will understand. So, you know, people like money. And I've discovered in my preaching that people get it when you use money as an example. I might flow with you. It's not only the ebooks. The Ausas, the Yorubas, everybody lost money. Glory to God. All right. That's why Jesus' parables were always about talent and money. So let me make this very simple to you. I said, when you are praying for understanding, you need light, enlightenment. When you are praying for opportunities, you need your eyes to be open. So permit me to say, we shut this place and then off the light. And you know it's dark everywhere now. Understand that? All right, so I told you. Sister Confidence, right? All right, and I said, Sister Confidence, and I like your name, and I know you like money. Those kind of names, like people like money. All right, so I said to you, in this place, there is 100 million naira in a box. If you find it, it's yours. Now you enter this place and you are now dragging around. You don't have any source of light. Dragging around. You get here, uh, set the money somewhere. Eh? You hit the keyboard and then you move around and you keep going around. All right? When you are going around, did you shut your eyes? You open your eyes. So, the same way, the scripture is there. The chemistry is there. The physics is there. You open your eyes and you are reading it. You can't find anything. But Brother Great now comes inside and turn on the light. It takes you like one minute to find that money and your life has totally tra transformed. You become a millionaire. Why? Because enlightenment comes. Light comes. When you switch on the light, life of people change. When you understand how things work, not only scriptures, when you understand how system works, how music works, how business works, when you understand how land property works, when you understand how governance works, your life transforms. But you need light for understanding. That's why you pray, Lord, enlighten my eyes. Enlighten my eyes. Enlighten. That's how to engage this. Is this the third one or fourth one? Ah, no, I need to move fast now. Number four, the spirit of cancel. We shall all need cancel in decision making. And the best person to advise or give cancel is the one who has all the information. He loves us and he has sent us an helper. And the person is the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, as many as are led by their pastor, they are the sons of God. By the Holy Ghost. By the person of the Holy Ghost. Don't forget we are speaking on the seven spirit of God. We must consider the importance of counsel. The Bible says uh, in 2 Samuel chapter 16 about the counsel of Ahithophel that anyone who hears this is like you have been in the court of God. Counsel. But here I want to emphasize three things to you. Number one, that the Holy Spirit is our ultimate counsel. John 14 verse 16. The Bible says he will guide you into all truths. He will guide you. That's what he does. 
Number three, that the, number two, that the best source of cancer is the Holy Spirit. And then number three, if you will see cancer from men, make sure they are men full of the Spirit. If you will at all see cancer from men, make sure they are men full of the Spirit. When I was growing up, my dad made a mistake, and one of the things he does is that he teaches us from his life experience. He told us, he said, don't ever take counsel or advice from somebody lower than you. What was his error? He was taking counsel from his driver. You see, now that's, that's just kind of, kind, of, kind of just foolish. But that's how you are also. You take counsel from an unbeliever. Your best friend is an unbeliever, so he advises you. He's not bad. He's is better. By experience. But you can see that you are both struggling. But you are too proud, too egoistic to ask counsel from those who really know better than you. You know, I remember a story Baba said about a man who wanted to leave his job. And Baba said, don't leave the job. Don't quit. He said, no, it's a better offer. They are paying me so much more. And he left. As he got to that job, the company folded up. He didn't have any job again. It's been 20 years when Baba said it, and the man had never had any job. If he had stayed with the former job, he would have been fine. The only thing knew that that job, that new job was not going to last. Things are not the way it looks forever. A mm. sister that I know, my, my neighbor, who was a big boy, those days he works at Nepa, manager of Nepa, Ibadan, Mokola Center. Big boy, big boy. Solid guy. His wedding, we had, the reception was at Secretariat about a fantastic chap. As we were dancing, dancing, and dancing, the guy there was using a pojo. It's not pigeons, it's pojo. He was using a pojo, 504. Glory to God. No, he's a Chevrolet. He's not a Chevrolet. And he's a Yonde, not a Yonda. A Yonda. It's not a Yonda. There's not a Yonda. So let me continue my story. So this guy was there. They were getting married. And we were all celebrating. At that time, he was a big boy. When they take our light, then if the man leaves the house, we know the light is coming in our area. No one you are just living in London because you have a big boy. As we were dancing, we discovered that our parents would stop dancing and stop rejoicing. What happened? On the Saturday, Friday evening, they wrote his sack letter at Nepal. And on Saturday, he got that sack letter. Let me say this to you. Till I stopped being in touch with them. The man never had a good job. Needless to say, the marriage folded up. Because in Yoruba tradition, the woman has left leg. Unless uh, she, she, she entered with left leg. That means she brought evil to the house. And that was it. But the woman married the big boy. And then the big boy became a small rat. You can say how you cannot make decisions just based on the now. Can you get, do you get that? That thought, that can answer, can become something else. Because it's not thought that can answer me. <laughs> and that lady that looks slim, after the first pregnancy, can become a rotunda. Yes, you need God. Tell your neighbor you need God. Yeah. All right. How do you engage this spirit? Wait on me for counsel and instruction. Just say, Holy Spirit, I'm waiting on you. What should I do? What should I do? Holy Spirit, I'm waiting on you. You are the spirit of counsel. According to Isaiah 11, 2. What should I do? What is your thought concerning this matter? Should I leave Ilone and go to Lagos? What should I do? What should I do now? Instruct me. Teach me. Help me. Should I say my camera? Ask him, should I date this lady? Should I go to Abuja? Ask him. If you don't ask, you are going to fail. Wait on him for cancel instruction. Wait for him. And then number five, the spirit of might. I'm not sure I'll get to seven again. I think I just stopped at five. Number five. The spirit of mind. God didn't wire believers to be timid and fearful. He gave you the spirit of might. Have you discovered that when you finish praying in tongues, there's something powerful in you? 
But you know why you are afraid? Because you don't pray in tongues enough. You don't live in the spirit. That's why Jesus said, pray without sin. That's why Paul said, pray without sin. And that's why Jesus said, a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. The more you pray, the more energy comes in the spirit. You quicken your spirit, man. Build up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. You are not made to be fearful. Scripture says the righteous is as bold as a lion. The reason you are as fearful as a rat. You don't do like this. Rat just runs away. You understand? It's because of who you are. Look at this scripture. Isaiah 59, 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Who does the lifting of the standard? Why are you not sleeping at night? Why is it that you dream and you want to kill yourself? A lady came to me and said, I, 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 I died in my dream. I died in my dream. I said, hey, what should I do? I said, I, you are not getting, I died in my dream. I said, that doesn't mean you will die. Those who die don't dream. They die. If you are still dreaming about it, it's because there is an answer. It's because the devil is doing like he should do. Scripture said, like a roaring lion. So he is just roaring. That means if he can actually swallow you up, he will kill you immediately. The reason he can't is because there's an edge around you. Can you just celebrate that edge? You are meant to pull down strong goats. When the ones who are supposed to drive on horses are the ones who are on the road, there's a problem. There's a problem. How can you be in a class and a non-believer has higher grade and you are comforted? They are getting to one. You are saying they hate you. Keep quiet. You are failing. They are not failing you. You are failing. Because the one you passed, you say I passed. That letter have failed me. They know me. They don't say those kind of rubbish beside me. What, what do you mean they failed you? You failed. You see, you must. You see, and that's one thing. You must accept your weaknesses and your failures also, so that you can do something about it. Don't push it on God. Oh no, call no The one you passed was it the one who wrote it? <laughs> one of the things I promised myself never to do is to preach Christianity without power. There is power mighty in the blood. There is power mighty in the blood. There is the of Jesus Christ. There is power mighty in the blood. Not in my Zion films. In real life. There is power mighty in the blood in the blood. I have not seen in spiritual engagement and in warfare I have not seen that demon that could withstand that blood. Yes, sir. Never. Not once. You call the name of Jesus like you are calling the name of your daddy. You must call that name with intentionality. Why? Because there is no name under ever given unto man by which he can be saved. You must call that name with intentionality. Why? Because at the mention of that name, every knee must bow, including lecturers, including obstacles, including pillars, including strongholds. Who have down mountain before Serubabel? The Bible says, Jesus God came down and the everlasting mountain Sinai began to burn. That same God is with you. When that's why I started with the Spirit of the Lord. He came down. He doesn't have to come down now. You, when you go there, it must burn. Why? Because the tangibility of God is stepping on that place. He lives in me. He watches over me. I'm not alone. I can never be alone. You see, some of us will speak boldly because we know who we will be. When you know who you are, your tenses will change. When you know who you are, your language changes. There is a spirit of mind. I remember a day in Basin, and I think I'll stop here. And the devil came visiting. You see, some of us have seen the devil live. 
live and direct. We saw him. You see, the devil is not what you see. And your life will be the same. He came into that room that day. And the darkness covered that room like I've never seen before. My heart was racing like I was going to be to same boat. Do I knew scriptures. But you see, when you see some things. And then I began to pray in tongues. You know those fear induced, fear powered prayers that does nothing. What, they are driving you. What are Jesus, Jesus. But it's late. It's what you say before you enter the car. Then I got there. You see, when we say we are going to Lagos, we can't, we, they can't bury us on the road. We say we are going to Lagos. And I don't say I'm getting to Lagos anymore now because the devil is wise. So I say I'm going to Lagos and I'm getting there. A -O Thing Jesus was saying until he gave a command to the devil. So at that moment, he just came to me that wait, 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 wait. And what came to me that I started saying, wait, wait. I said, wait, wait. Devil, wait, wait, calm down. Ah, and then started laughing. I said, wait, 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 wait. But if you can kill me, I should I should be dead by now. What do you think? And I said, love you. So you are just the old Kahalen, you can't kill me. And I started laughing. And then I said, what? I said, no, no, no. So you just came here to visit me. You can't do anything to join this nation. You, because I'm thinking, if you can kill me, it's been long. You should have strangled me. It's been a while. So that means there's something that's stopping me from being this. You are such a monkey. You are an idiot. <laughs> I just got it. I said, whoa. Are you kidding? So I'm still alive. And I started laughing. Now, I laughed so much. You know, there are certain love that you are laughing intentionally. Have you ever made jest of somebody before? I want the person to know. Yes, sir. I want the person to know. You will laugh. I said, <laughs> I said, <laughs> on the bed. And I rolled down. <laughs> and you know, he's a very proud devil. One thing he cannot take is to be mocked. Proud people don't like being mocked. They get very angry and they go. You understand? I laughed so much. And then I suddenly opened my eyes. And the old place was all things bright and beautiful. <laughs> all creatures great and small. Ha! All things bright and wonderful. I saw the things the Lord God made all. And then I stood up. And I said, devil, we are in this. Together. In this system of the world. When I come, you go. Why? Because there are certain supernatural encounters that God allows you to have so that your level can change in the spiritual. And what makes our level change is not because there is a greater anointing, it's because this kingdom operates by knowledge. It is what you know that sets you free. It's a pity I can't finish because they're handing over. But one thing is sure 
that spirit is essential for you to change your life. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. And then I didn't talk to you about the spirit of the fear of the Lord. You need to fear God. You understand that? But we all must learn to do the right things when it is due and when it's time for it. All right. How many of you believe that you are anointed? Do you believe you have the Holy Spirit on your inside? One minute, put your hands on your head. You know, I told you about me anointing myself. I'm anointed with fresh oil. Have the Holy Spirit on me. I want you to, you know the way I eat your hair sometimes. Some people know me. They say, no, no, what do you mean? You eat it that way. Yourself, you feel it. I want you to hit your head. I say, I'm anointed with fresh oil. I'm anointed with fresh oil. I'm anointed with the power of Holy Ghost. Come on. Come on. That girl is my face. Come on, come on, stop. Glory to God. Come on. Come on, begin to pray in the spirit right now. Come on, begin to pray in the spirit right now. In an ano sandale, no hune ne kahina na. Vile vile vonu na nasa vonu falaleno sheketeya. Agigo dekia kolwete ye varadasha. E ya 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 e. E ya 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 e ya e. Magaye magaye mayara. E magaya mayare mayara. E ya ya na ma mirira ba. E ya na ya na me ya na 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 ya ya na na zama na na shegaya. E mala vare ro. Jagaya, we gaya na mo uzege ebe baya na, we gaya na uzaga ebe baga ebe, abele ebe ebe na ba ebe, arunda le baya na ham. Thirty seconds more, thirty seconds more. Let the deep in you arise, let the deep in you arise. Zina no zina no shakio, ili yogua gari geno igiara na, elelele le baya na ba, ele na na no shakata ya, ayaka ayaka. I open you to new depths of wisdom, new depths of revelation, new depths of wisdom. I cut a cut a cut ya, I loko lo cut a cut ya, I grab a cut a cut ya, I regal a cut a cut ya, I magal a cut ya, I gene ne ne o cut ya, I vrada da da vrada da da ro shaga ya, I vrada da 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 ro shaga ya, da 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 da, I vrala 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 ro shaga. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. As the deer pants for the water brooks, so pour our soul for you, for your person, for your inheritance, for your grace, for your glory, for your power. Shega ya gada gatule kala kuna ya e maranda maranda mare na mana mane ne ne usanda ya e ya 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 Put your hand on your head and say this after me. From today, I see in manifestation, and I receive my. Father, we exalt you. Thank you for such a time in your midst and in your presence. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your people. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Glory to God. You can have your seat in God's presence.